Bless you. So, Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight and ask you, Lord, that you would help us to advance your kingdom even now in Jesus name. We thank you, Lord, that you're showing us the way that we should live or the way we should move and the way we should have our very being. Yes. And it is in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're giving to us, all that you're showing us. We ex we're excited about it. Hallelujah. Yes. And Lord, we ask now that the blessing be upon your word in Jesus' name, that we would understand it. In the name of the Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Live stream, Facebook, YouTube, all of you guys, go to Bethel Outreach. I'm sorry. Bethel OIC Church. Bethel OIC Church and download the affirmations. The affirmations are out there on the website, so go and do that. Um, matter of fact, I will, since I have so many, see my affirmation got so many notes and stuff on it, can I have a, just a regular one, please? Please, and mine is a little different than y'all's. And so what I really know, he, she got me one. So what I realize is this, since I can't get through any of them, can't finish them all, this is what we're going to do. This is what I realize we're going to do with the affirmations and the, and the scriptures. What we're going to do, we're going to do the affirmations, but we're going to keep reading. Amen. We're going to read everything on the page. Glory to God. We at least will say we finished the page. And then I'll go back and teach. Amen. Amen. All right, good. So if you would, please, why don't you stand to your feet with me? There's a whole lot to this one. This is um, the inauguration of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. The inauguration of the kingdom. So let's let's go. We affirm. The affirm that what? The New Testament phase of the kingdom of God was inaugurated in fact and history at Jesus first coming to the earth and be operates in reality and power among men in this present age. Do we agree? Yes. Amen. What do we do? We deny. We deny that the church must await the second coming of Christ for the kingdom of God to be inaugurated on earth in time, space, reality, and in power. It is already here. Amen. Yes. Thy kingdom come. Isaiah 9, 6 to 7 says what? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. A government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Isaiah 52, verse 13 through 15. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled. He will be very high. And as many were astonished at thee, his vestures were so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The king shall shut their mouth at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Isaiah 53 and 1 through 12. This is the entire chapter. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and out of the root of dry ground he has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He is despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before 
for her sheer and dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because they had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When he shall put his offering for sin, I'm sorry, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he made he bear them all, and the intercession for the transgressors. Come on, that whole chapter is my book. That's my book right there. Glory to God. Come on, read. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts and will be ah, and they shall be my people and they shall teach no man man I'm sorry, do it again. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor. Every man his brother saying, know the Lord. For they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, say the <laughs> I their sin no more. I tell you what, I tell you what, when you you when you're reading these and you got two versions in your head. <laughs> Understood. You got the King James and you got the TPT in your head. And you go, okay, it says this in the other one. Daniel 2, come on, 32 through that right about. This image, head was of gold, breast was of arms of silver, his belly was his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hand, which smote the image upon his feet, and the brother had bad feet, and broke them into pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. For the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Daniel 2, 43 to 44. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with merit clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Michael 2 and 5. For thou, Bethlehem, after not, after that, right, though be a little more than a thousand of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth me. The ruler of Israel going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. 
Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a coat, a foal of an ass. Come on, Matthew 2 and 2 through 6. Saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the day of Judah, art least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Matthew 3, 1 through 3. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he spoken of by the prophet Elias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Matthew 4, 17 and, and verse 23 reads, This time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 23, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, and preaching in the... and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Matthew 6, 9 through 10. After this manner... Our Father, where? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Come on. Verse 10. As you go preach, saying, heaven is at hand. My Lord, it's not here yet, but it was at hand. Come on, Matthew 12 and 28. Devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Matthew 16, 18 to 19. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, Ecclesia, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Matthew Matthew 21, 4 and 5. All this is done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto you meek and sitting on an ass and on the coat fold of an ass. Matthew 22, 45, 42 and 45. Saying, You of Christ, whose son is he? The son of him, the son of David. He says unto them, How then does David in the Spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power given unto me in heaven and in an earth. Mark. 1, 14 through 15. Now after that, John was put into prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Luke 8, 1 and, Luke 8 and 1. And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him. Luke 23 and 3 and Pilate says, art thou king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, thou saith <laughs> John 18, 36 and 37 Jesus answered my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom was of this world then would my subject fight that I should not be delivered unto the Jews. Now, kingdom not of this world. Thou king then? Jesus answered, Thou said that I am a king. 
to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, here is my voice. Come on. Romans 16 and 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under my feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 1, 19 through 23. Seating greatness of his power to us would who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that fulfilleth all in all Ephesians 2 and 6 and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ <laughs> hallelujah come on Hebrews 1 and 3 who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins set down on the right hand of the majesty on high in Hebrews 8 10 and 13 the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days says the Lord I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their heart and I will be the, the, and they shall be to me a people and they shall not teach every man his neighbor nor every man his brother saying know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more in that he says a new covenant he has made first old now that which decays and wax old is ready to vanish away last one Re Revelation 1 and 5 Jesus who is faithful witness the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that love us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and the people said amen, amen. that was good reading right there amen. see that was good wasn't it? that's the longest one we got huh good scriptures let the scriptures preach by themselves amen Old folks said, if you let them, the word will preach for itself. It will preach for itself. Okay, so go all the way back to the top. Let's go to Isaiah 9 and 9, um, 6 through 7. And let's deal with this. There are some things in there that is really important. Um, unto us a child is born unto us a son is given the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the and the prince of peace these are the five things that that he's called now it's interesting wonderful there means marvels to be a marvel amen okay um, to marvel at that's what it means. Counselor there means to advise, counsel, give counsel, give purpose, give plans. The word there, mighty, is strong and mighty. And L is God. Everlasting means um, continually, con continuing in the future. Who is that? The Father. It will always be continuing in the future. And naturally, um, Prince is ruler, leader, chief, chieftain. And he's the prince, not only the prince, but he's the prince of Shalom. He's the prince of peace. And so here, it's interesting though, it says that not only that, he shall be what? Upon what? The throne of David to order it. He's going to be on the, pro, uh, he's going to take over the throne of David to order it, to establish it um, with judgment and justice henceforth forever and ever. The zeal of the Lord um, of hosts shall perform this. So if you go to First Kings, you can write these down because you're not going to be able to follow as, as fast as I may go here. First Kings 2 and 45, it says, and King Solomon shall be blessed and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. So how long will the throne of David be? Forever. forever. So did the throne of David stop yet? 
No, the, the, the reason why it was going to be forever was not because David or his descendants was going to be um, seated on the throne, but because Jesus would be the one that would be seated on the throne. And therefore, him being in, on, uh, on the throne of David, the throne remained forever because he lasts forever. Not as a king that would die and have secession. And so Jesus is, oh, um, <clears throat> matter of fact, Isaiah 16 and, and 5, it says, In mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. So that's what, what he's doing. He's going to, it is the sure mercies of David that Jesus is now the one that is, 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 is administering. Jesus is the one sitting on the throne. It is, and we know that also because Gabriel says that very thing. Gabriel says that very thing to Mary when he comes in this and gives her the whole salutation about her being chosen as the, as the one. In that he says to her, look at what he says in Luke 1 and 32. He says, um, that he, talking of Jesus, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the high and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David so this tells us clearly that this kingdom is this kingdom will be established upon the throne of David and the Davidic spirit and I'm, I'm, I want you to hear this and and again this is not something that a lot of people have talked about and I, I, I really haven't I really haven't heard a whole lot of people to give an account of this but I believe that in this hour that the, that the Davidic throne um, has to be established in the earth. What I mean by that? The Davidic throne of, of, of praise and the Davidic throne of even what I do believe that predatory prayers are going to come back where we are able to now pray prayers that would literally deal with enemies. And not just spiritual enemies, but also natural enemies. Did you hear what I just told you? OK, so I believe that I believe that that's that's again, that's on me. Put it on me. If somebody said I don't believe that, so well, that's what Bishop Jackson believe. OK, <clears throat> again, just put it on me. I, I, I do. I believe that that Davidic spirit has to come back in the house and in the, in the church. And that Davidic spirit also is a spirit of war, a warrior. Um, Saul killed his thousands. David killed his ten thousands. OK, and so it's a warring spirit. And again, I, I do believe that it's spiritual, but I do believe that that spirit has to come back into the earth and that God is going to allow and establish the throne because Jesus is reigning on it. Mm -hmm. OK, are you all with me with that? OK. All right. So and when you when you when you deal with the fact that that throne is established now and a kingdom, if you're going to have a throne, you got a kingdom. Okay, you with me? So if there is a throne, there is a kingdom. And and God has already said that I'm establishing it, this one on the on on the throne. I'm the one that's establishing the kingdom. Okay? So, but there was a price to pay for this kingdom. And that's what that's why we went to Isaiah 50, 52. When you go to the next scripture, the price that was paid to establish the kingdom. This was not, and it's interesting, this was not a conquering king with an army riding in to conquer another nation. So this king is, is, doesn't have an army because you hear what, and we, we probably won't get that far back in there. You hear what he says to Pilate. He says, wait a minute, if I was, if, if, if I was a king on the earth, my subjects would fight. So that I would not be delivered to the Jews. Right. Okay. Um, so I don't have anybody fighting for me. So I'm a king. You say I'm a king. I am a king, but I'm not a king from here. Right. So I'm not riding in with a conquering army to take over. Right. Right. But I'm a, I am a conqueror. Right. And which is why Paul says you are more than conquerors you, through him that loved us. So we are conquerors, but more than a conqueror because a conqueror takes over, put in bondage. We capture to release into freedom. Do you hear me? We're conquerors. I'm going to conquer you to release you into a new place of freedom. You see that? That's a different conquering. And that's what Jesus is. Um, and but but the thing that was interesting and what is also different <clears throat> is that the king 
The king has to now so that the kingdom can be established and he can now have subjects have to himself die. So the, 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 the price that had to be paid to get the kingdom was his life. Yeah, that's true. And so, so now that's what we're looking at in Isaiah 52. When you look at Isaiah 52, 13 through, um, it's dealing with, it's dealing with the Via Della Rosa. Mm -hmm. This is dealing with the Via Della Rosa. His walking, the Via Della Rosa is him walking with the cross. Okay. Also before that, even before that, his um, getting beaten. Now, I said something to you a couple of a couple of weeks ago um, about this. Is the fact that this is there is nowhere that says that Jesus received thirty nine stripes, say one. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. But that was said in the Bible. It said in the Old Testament. It also said by Paul. Paul received 39 stripes, save one. Why? Because Paul was beaten by Jews. And a part of the Jewish law was that a man could not get more than 40 stripes. And so that they wouldn't go past that and make a mistake, they stopped at 39. Okay? That was their, that was their job. Paul said he was beaten five times that way. Paul received 39 stripes, save one, five times. The Jews beat him five times. Huh. Glory to God. How many of y'all would have stopped preaching? You, <laughs> you get, so I'm going to find me another job. <laughs> Paul, Paul said, I make tents, right? I make me these tents. I am not, I ain't getting no more whoopings. <laughs> you and you and they made it too. And you know, that was that first whooping. Yeah. Mr. Man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I won't say nothing else. <laughs> right, you, I'm going to use me some wisdom on this one. And brothers, brother, five times got these. So Jesus was whipped by Romans. The beating that Jesus took was by Romans. No way in the world did Roman follow Jewish custom. They would have gone against it just because it was Jewish custom. So there were no limits on this beating. There was no place of stoppage. There was no place in his mind where he says, only two more licks. Yeah. Jesus God. He doesn't know how many more licks is coming. Okay? We clearly know that the Romans had a, uh, a, a whip that had metal shards and and bone shards embedded in there so that when the whoop hit you it pulled your it pulled your skin off of your body and this in the bible says he was he was marred more than any man his vesture was marred more than any man and then he says and his form more than the sons of men that basically you could not <coughs> You could not tell. Remember the movie, the ever, ever, the Elephant Man. Anybody remember the Elephant Man movie? You remember how hideous he looked? Okay, he was marred more than the Elephant Man looked. He was marred more than any man. He, matter of fact, the historians would say that he didn't even look like a man. See, because we have these pretty pictures. <laughs> we got these pretty pictures. We don't put Jesus, we don't put Jesus up on the thing. We don't even don't even look like he didn't get hit one time. <laughs> he up on the cross, his hair flowing in the breeze. All we get, all we got, all we got is is a, his feet and nailed and hands nailed. If that's all he had, he would man that would have been a day in the in the park. But his hair was bloody and bleeding. His face was bruised and battered. His, look, Jesus said himself, I could tell all of my bones. You got to read Psalms 22. I could tell all of my bones. What? Goodness gracious. So that, that thing was pulling that much skin off of you. Not only your back, his legs, his arms. He's hit in his face of all kinds. He's marred. He's doing this because why? I've got to usher in a kingdom. Are y'all with me? The whole world need to be saved. 
And this is the price of sin. That's the thing. This is the price of sin. This this is not just some little thing. This is the price of sin. This is the this is the price that everybody had to pay for sin, and he's taking all of it. And it says, So shall he sprinkle many nations, the king shall shut their mouth at him. They did, for that which had not been told shall they see. And that which shall not be heard shall they consider. Wow. Wow. The results of the suffering for the people he suffered for, that's what you just read. And they, and they benefited from his sacrifice. They benefited from his sacrifice. And so Isaiah 53, when I, the reason why we read the entire chapter, and we'll go back through here, the reason why we read the entire chapter is because, again, now you find out not only um, the fact that he suffered, you find out what the suffering did for you. In, in, in 52, you find out the level of the suffering, but now the suffering, what did it do for you? Okay, now how did it relate? But you still hear more of the suffering. I call Isaiah 53 Jesus' bio. And I don't think many people want this bio. But before we get to the bio, he asks you the question in Isaiah 53. He asks you two important questions. There are three questions in the entire chapter. And the first verse has the first two questions. And he says, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who has believed our report? Matter of fact, Jesus uses this in his own ministry and asks these same questions while he's yet alive. He asks, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who believed what we've showed you and told you would happen and is happening? And then, who understand the strength of God? Who understand the strength of God? Who believed the report? Who See, and so again, we make a lot of this stuff nice and cute, you know, um, and we put it in song, who shall be, who believe the report of the Lord, all that, you know, and that's all right to sing, but we sing it, we still don't know what we're saying, because we ain't believe nobody report yet, you see, who's believing, who's believing the report, this is also a kingdom can be established, y'all. And so he shall grow up, verse 3 goes on, he says, he shall grow up before, before God. That's to him. He shall grow up before God as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. So this is interesting because what I, what I was looking at this is this is not a beautiful flower that catches everyone's eye. Jesus was not a beautiful flower that catches everyone's eye. Even if you know nothing about flowers, if you see a blue, beautiful flower, you, it can catch your eye. You can go, what is that flower? That's, a, that's beautiful. I love that. That's nice. He, he, was, he, was, he said he came out of dry ground. He, he, he's blooming out of dry ground. Why? The whole world is in sin. This, 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 this plant that's coming up cannot have any beauty in it because of where it's coming from. Did you hear what I did you hear that? And it's connected to humanity. Y'all with me? Yes. Okay. So basically it's a plant that you walk by and you don't even give a look at. My goodness. It's nothing about the plant that you go, oh that's nice. No, you don't even consider it. How many plants do you walk by? You walk by plenty of plants in your lifetime and in your day that you don't even give any consideration to. It's just uh, you just uh, don't, you know, you can't even remember that you walked past it. That's how, that's how they felt about Jesus. That's the, that's the consideration he had. Come on. Notice here, he is despised. And in this, in this one verse, it said twice this, with that one word. He is despised and rejected the men. A man of sorrow. Listen to this bio. How many of y'all like this bio? <laughs> he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He is despised and we esteemed him not. This is that, this is that root out of dry, dry ground. The reason why is what, what, there's six things. Rejected of men, one. Man of sorrow, two. Acquainted with grief, three. People turn their faces and look away from him. Four, people don't desire him at all. G gone, don't want to see him. People didn't celebrate him. 
Six things in that one verse. That's, man, we don't want that bio. Come on. One of the things we want more than anything is people to like us. Mm. Wow. Yeah. When people see us coming, they want to be around us. They desire us. Come on. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. And then in the midst of that, because it continues, he says, Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Now listen to this. Now this is really important for you to get, because right here is some of your deliverances. Listen to what he says. Listen to what this says. It says, Surely he has borne our grief. The word grief there. Um, you can look it up, H2483. I'm not going through announcing it and pronouncing it and all that. Go look it up in blueletterbible.org, H2483. Grief there actually means sickness and disease. Did you hear that? Surely he has borne our sicknesses and our, and our diseases. Wow, look at that. Surely he has. As a matter of fact, our sorrows. The word there, the, the, the word there, I didn't, I didn't give you the, the, the number. The word there is for pain, physical or mental. The word sorrow is pain, physical or mental. Did you hear me? Isn't that serious? So our grief is our sickness and our diseases and our pain. Mm-hmm. Y'all ain't hearing me here. So Jesus has already carried that. And even though, even though that's the case, come on, watch this, we still didn't esteem him. Even though he came to do that for humanity, humanity still felt like he was, it was good for him to be beaten, whipped, destroyed. <laughs> still didn't look on him. He was stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Yes, it is. So look at what it says. But he was wounded. Come on. For our transgressions, he was bruised. For our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was where? Upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Are y'all with me? Okay, now, our transgressions. Notice now. This is, a, this is really important. For our transgressions, he was wounded. Did you see that? Now, that wounding, again, is for many of you heard me say this before we get this, it's for outward bleeding. That wounding is for things that I know about you. That wounding was for things that you've done wrong and I know you did it. That's outward bleeding. Glory to God. Okay. Our iniquities, bruisings. That's inward bleedings. That's the things you do that I don't know about. <laughs> that's the blood on the inside. So it's blood that's dealing on the inside for the things you ain't telling me. Secret sins. Stuff you done done that you're going to take to your grave. Ain't nobody helping me. He said, I, I'm, I, he, he was bruised for that. That's inward bleeding. A bruise is an inward bleeding. That transgression, that's outward bleeding. That's the stuff that you didn't got caught with or you stuff that's been exposed. He said, I was wounded for that. I was bruised for your inward stuff. I, I was bruised for your inward holdings and lying and, and, and secrets. I was bruised for that. And the bruising was amazing. Because you think about that again. So you hear that this whooping caused him to bleed outwardly before he's on the cross. He's bleeding outwardly, but he's also bruising inwardly. Black and blue. Come on. Come on. You've seen somebody with a really bad bruise before, haven't you? You go, man, that's ugly. That's ugly. God, look at that bruise on him. Yeah, well, he was bruised all over his body. Am I getting your attention? Why, why is he doing all this? He's trying to usher in what? A kingdom. He's ushering in a kingdom. 
He's got to usher in a kingdom through his own suffering and sacrifice. Not with a conquering army. I thank you for the one. Mm. I appreciate the mm. Thank you, brother, for the mm. I tell you. Are y'all with me? Yes. Come on. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. This, we're doing our own thing. And the Lord has laid on him. What? That bruising. He was oppressed. Okay, here, let's, let's, keep, let's keep the bio going. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. And he opened out his mouth. With all of this whooping, with all of this beating, with all this bruising, with all this blood, And what he told me when he opened his mouth, not that he didn't say, oh, that's natural. That's not the, that's not the mouth he, they're talking about. They're talking about he did not rail them or bring accusation against them or complain about the fact that they were beating him. He said no words. It's natural to, to respond to pain. And there's no question that most likely he definitely responded to pain. But the issue of saying anything about why it was happening, nothing. Not one word. And the reason for him not saying one word, there's no one who can help him. And we'll find out in a moment. There's nobody on the planet that can help him. If you have no help on the planet, who would you cry to? Who can you complain to? There is no help here. Y'all with me? Okay. Oh my God. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And yet, this is a, here, here's, a, here's that third question. And who shall declare his generation? Th that question, the third question, like the first two, we need to answer, but we definitely need to answer this one. <laughs> because it's really directed at us. Yeah. Everyone that came after this beating and whooping, who will declare his generation? For he was cut out of the land of the living, and for the transgression of my people was he stricken. This is, here is a reason for the suffering. He tells you, here is a reason for the suffering. Why? For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He wasn't not just stricken just to be stricken. He, this was for my people. So that, a, so that a people would be birthed. See? So everyone would know the Lord. Isn't that what you read? Yeah. Not from the least to the greatest. Yeah, they all know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. See? This that he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth so it says right there he's buried among people of the world he's buried among people of the world both ends of the spectrum he says not only with rich folk but the common people who were wicked but the wicked in general but the common people I'm, he was buried amongst them all why were you buried amongst them all because I represented them all yes yes my lord and you think about it, this king does not even have a tomb He's in a borrowed tomb. <laughs> so you can think about this. If God ever borrowed anything, yes, a tomb to die, to, to lie in. Lord. Okay. Come on, y'all with me here? Yes. My Lord. He said, because he had done no violence. He said, so found no guilt of any crime, physical or verbal. There was no guilt of any crime. Pilate clearly said it. I find no fault in this man. He said, so I'm going to release him. No. They said, no, you're not going to release him. We're going to kill him. No fault in him. There was no fault in him 
in, in, in any way, there was no crime done in the natural, there was no crime done in the spiritual, there was no crime done in the verbal, there was no word spoken that was, that was true about him. He, everything was false. It's an innocent man being beat and won't say anything about it. <laughs> innocent, innocent. And now we get this real picture of why he kept his mouth shut. And it says, yet it what? Please, Please who? Do you, see that, do you see that word in all capital letters? Is it in cap, all capital letters in your Bible? That means it's, it's, it's the Godhead bodily. It's everybody. is involved in this process. It pleased the Lord. Come on, somebody. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, Lord, look. I want to bring out number with the transgressors and preach it on you. Come on. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. So who are you going to talk to if this, is, if this is God doing it? Jesus have told his disciples the whole walk that he had to die. Hello? And that he would, ra be, be, that he would raise on, be ra risen on the third day. He would raise on the third day. So wait a minute now. He knows he's going to die. And he knows at what level he's going to die. He's not, he's not in the dock about this at all. The scriptures have already told him. Psalm 22 has already told him. He read Psalm 22. He clear on, on what he's going to do. Isaiah 53 has already told him what it's going to look like. He, this is already written. Isaiah 53 is already written. Come on, Psalm 22 is already written. He already know what he's going to do. Psalm 52, Psalm 53, I, I mean, I'm sorry, Isaiah 52, Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, all written. So he knows them all. He is the word. And he's trying to get to this place. <laughs> Why? Because it's the will of the father. And then as he's in that garden, he still has this point in that garden with that soul man to go. Oh, I know what I'm supposed to go through, but God, is there another way? Now, it's interesting, too, because even with that understanding, what I just gave you. He asks, is there another way, knowing there's not another way? <laughs> the reason why there's not another way has already been written. Yeah. It could have been adjusted if it had not been written. Right. But because this is already written, there is no other way. But his soul was still trying to figure out. That's how strong the soul is. Inside of God. <laughs> to say, is there another way? Not my will. He, he snapped back quick, don't he? Yeah. Not my will. But again, it takes three hours. It takes him three hours to corral his soul to the point that he can now face what he knew he had to face. Oh, Lord Jesus. See? Please the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. Who put him to grief? God did. When thou shalt make what? His what? There it is. See, his soul, his nefesh, his soul was an offering for sin. His soul was an offering for sin. He was not dying spiritually. He was dying solically. So that you could now overcome yours. Yeah. Right. Oh. So everything he went through was for the, with the price that had to be paid for the sin that is lodged in the soul of man. Y'all with me? He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. <laughs> My God, those who accept this place, this price paid, those who accept this price that's been paid become the seed. And Jesus' ministry is prolonged, um, prolonged through us. Right there, you write it down, Acts 29. There is only 28 chapters in Acts. You write down Acts 29 because you are the continuation of Acts. Wow. Ooh, Jesus. Acts does not conclude. It really doesn't conclude. It might end that book, but it never stops because you are the Acts of the, of the Apostles. You are the axe. You are the one that's supposed to be carrying on. 
Read me. Now, I got that t-shirt that said, read me. Acts 29. You can read me. You read about me. I'm Acts 29. I wear it. I know somebody go try to find it. Ain't no Acts 29. Take them a minute. I know it take them a minute. If they ever get it. But the church is supposed to be Acts 29. Amen? Okay? He shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. Notice, again, God saw the travail of his soul. Where did he see that? In the garden. By the way, what I want you to understand is, why did he go back through this? Because I, I, I wanted to, that's what I was looking at. Lord, wait a minute now. Why didn't you put this stuff up there around when you were bruised for my transgressions, wounded, uh, um, um, bruised, I mean, wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity? Why didn't you put it up there? Because this is another level. This is the level of the dealing of the soul. Up there, he was dealing with physical healing and pain. Notice? Flesh, right. Now he's, he and he's dealing with the soul level. So not only he have dealt with your whole, he dealt with your whole being. Not only your body, but also your soul. Come on. He shall see the travail of his soul. He shall be satisfied. And by his knowledge, by this knowledge, I love saying, not just his knowledge, by his knowledge, yes, but by this knowledge that he had, shall my righteous servant justify many. And by this same knowledge, you're going to justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He shall bear their iniquities. Now, go back and look. What was iniquities? Bruising was connected to the iniquities. So he's going to bear their iniquity. He's going to bear their inward bleeding, their secrets, their, 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 their hidings. But watch this. He's saying, you're going to do it now. God's going to see the travail of his soul and be satisfied with that. And by this knowledge, and by his knowledge, the knowledge that he has of this, you're going to do that now. You're going to stand at intercessors and you're going to bear the, you're going to bear the iniquity of the generation. Yes. Yes. Inward bruisings. <laughs> you're not going to be bruised. You're dealing with what's hiding on the inside of them. That's, that's good, that's good, that's right. You're going to be able to release them from what they're holding on to, what they won't seem to let go of. Mm -hmm. You're going to be the ones now, through your intercession, through your travail. Why? Because, the, and then he says, so he says, he, what is this? he says, so because this is, this all this instruction is how to, how to get them free. Therefore will I divide a portion and divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong who are the he's going to divide the spoil of war with who? the strong who's the strong? those that are entered into his knowledge the same knowledge he used to get us free is the knowledge we're using to get other people free and that's the spoil come on y'all got it because he has poured out his soul unto death <laughs> He was numbered with the transgressors. Wow, wow. And he was and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Lord Jesus. That's a pretty good book I, that I that I wrote. <laughs> Being numbered with the transgressors, you need that. If you don't have that in your library, you gotta have it and you need it. Maybe if you got it, you need to pull it back out and read back over that rascal. Because that's your, that's delivering the generation. You with me? Yes, sir. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34 that we looked at. Look what he says. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a what? Out of this, out of this, he said, I'm going to make a what? A new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. I really believe that is Israel. I believe that is Israel and I believe that is the ecclesia. Judah is the ecclesia. Judah, because we are born of the tribe of Judah. Right. Israel is Israel, and it's still Israel. Come on, are you getting that? He says, I'm going to make a new covenant with Israel. All they got to do is accept me. <laughs> and with Judah, with the ecclesia, with the church, a new covenant. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. Huh. 
But this shall be the covenant. This shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law where? In their inward part. And write them in their hearts, and I will be to them there, I will be, I will be, um, and, and will be their God, and they shall be my people, and they shall teach no man no more, every, teach, teach no more every man his neighbor, saying, <laughs> and his brother, and his brother saying, know the Lord. You won't have to, cause of why? Everybody in the kingdom knows the king. There's not a subject in the kingdom that doesn't know the king. Not one subject in the kingdom that doesn't know the king. <laughs> I'm preaching better than y'all responding. Okay, I'm going, because of my time, I'm going, I'm going to have to skip. So I'm going to skip all of the Daniel stuff. Okay, for right now. I want to bring you all the way over there to Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. Because it's going to get gooder and gooder down there. I got all this to, ain't no way. It just ain't no way. Lord help me. Lord, it just ain't no way. It ain't no way. It just ain't no way. It's just, just think of Jesus, but ain't no way. Okay, I told you, that's why I think this is a two-parter. <laughs> this is a two-parter. I will finish this up on you. But Matthew 2, 2 through 6 is saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Here the Magi came, and Herod is asking, where is he? And no, the Magi asked that question. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. There's a whole lot in that. It really is a whole lot in that. He says, the Magi who has come um, from the east, most of, they, they have to be walking or coming from Babylon. Okay, that's the way they had to be coming if they were coming and following east into Jerusalem. So they were coming from Iraqish area into into Jerusalem. Okay, Are you, you got that? Y'all y'all shaking? Okay. Now many have believed, and again, when you look at the star, the the Bethlehem star account and all of that but 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 a lot of um, filio and all of them um, believe that this magi they give an account of this magi have coming from Babylon were the, the magi that was with Daniel okay that Daniel was again remember remember the, remember the Hebrew boys and Daniel they, and it was not the, just the Hebrew boys and Daniel it was a whole bunch of them that were captured and they were the best of the best of the best. Yeah. Okay? They were great in science and knowledge they were, and all the math and everything. They were the best of the best of the best. And so it is believed that these guys were the guys who were being trained, even under Daniel, to understand the astronomy. Okay? Okay? And understand the stars and the galaxies and all that and looking unto the stars and the galaxies to give them signs of the Messiah's coming. Okay, are y'all with me so far? Okay, now, if you would, um, look at um, Isaiah 40, just keep, you go to Isaiah 40 and 26. And it says, lift up your eyes on high and behold, who has created these things? that bringeth out their host by number and calleth them all by name by the greatness of his might for he for that he is strong in power not one faileth god has made every star he he numbers them all they are hosts by number and you know i love that part that's why i love this verse and calleth them all by name. So God has given name to all of the stars, all of the galaxies. Everything got a name. And there is nothing without a name. Okay? You, you also know that in every galaxy is billions of stars. But there are billions of galaxies. So there are billions of galaxies and within the galaxies are billions of stars. We know where one galaxy is. It is on Orion's belt. That, that might take you a while. That might take you a while. <laughs> okay, you'll get that. Live stream, y'all will get that. It's you. They say you said maybe. 
Most of them they won't get it. All right. All right. So the deal is but that's 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 billions and billions of galaxies, billions and billions of stars within the billions of galaxies. Okay? Now, and God calls them all by name. And it says, not only call them by name, they speak. Each one of them speak. What are they saying? All of them speak. They speak by their formation in the, in the heavenlies. They don't speak outward. They speak by their formation in the heavenlies and where they are found in the heavenlies at, the, at certain times. As they, as they are found even in places of the constellations. Now, listen to me close so you can understand something. Okay, I had people that would get up every morning and get the newspaper to find out how their life going should be based on the fact that they are a a Virgo or or whatever they might be. I I, I can remember that one because I'm supposed to be that. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to be. Okay. And I said, y'all are foolish. What are y'all looking at? That thing can't tell you what you're going to do. So, but watch this now. The, the stars, listen to me close now. This is really important so you can get this, so you can explain it to other peoples. Okay? The stars are only used, or the stars are used only as signs not as causes. Yes. Did you hear me? God is the only cause, but he uses signs to point to other things. So God is the cause for everything, but there are, the stars are not the cause of your life. So they can be used as a signpost and point to something, but they're not the cause of anything. So they ain't causing you to be rich, poor, dumb, crazy, nothing. <laughs> Temperamental, nothing. Not, it has no cause effect on your life unless you're following witchcraft. Now, that's why the Bible speaks explicitly against astronomy in that sense to say you are not to follow that foolishness. Okay, because it doesn't cause anything, but it can point to something. It, it, it definitely can point to something. It definitely can point to something. Now, um, because there is a star that the Magi is following. So it is pointing to something, isn't it? It is pointing. It didn't cause Jesus to come, but it's pointing to Jesus that he is here. Okay, are you following? It also pointed to the fact that he was on his way, but it didn't cause him to get here. That was God. Are you with me here? So the Magi have been looking at the heavens to determine when should we move out. When will the king of the Jews, which tells you they are Jewish. Because nobody from Babylon is going to take that journey to worship the king of the Jews when they're not Jewish. So this gives you a good idea that these guys were Jewish. We, we, we pretty, pretty much know that. Paul encountered one in the book of Acts. You got to remember him. He was not, not in the same mode as these magi. Okay? Are y'all 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 with me? Yes. Then Paul, so if you go to Romans, my time is gone. Look at this. Lord, help me. If you go to Romans 10, now, we run to Romans 10, 9, and 10 all the time, but go right under that in verse 16. Paul says something that's really interesting about this whole encounter of Jesus coming into the earth and Jesus now making, um, uh, making his way to the cross. This is the beginning of that. Watch what he says. He says in verse 16, he says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel as Elias says, Lord, who has believed our report? Look at that. Look at that. So Paul immediately quotes Isaiah 53 and 1. Who has relieved our report? So he says in verse 17, and it goes on and says, So then faith comes by hearing, and what? Amen. Hearing by the word of God. Now see, listen, listen how often we pull that scripture out and dangle it out all by itself and not connect it to anything. Right. You see, Paul said, who, who has believed our report? 
He said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The report that you heard is the word of God. So have you believed that report? And in believing that report, that's your faith. Your faith is connected to believing the report that you've already heard. So whatever the Bible has said, your faith is connected to that word. Who has believed that report? Or whom to the arm is the arm of the Lord revealed? He said, Well, look, look, look. Didn't faith come by hearing? Hearing by the word of God. And look what he says here. He says, But I say, because my time is gone, I gotta keep going. But I say, have ye not heard? Yes, verily. There he says, he says, have you not heard? And he says, Yes, verily. Their sound went out. Out went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. What is he talking about? He's talking about Psalms 19 17. Go to Psalms 19 17. And what he's talking about right there in Psalms 19 17, he's dealing with the fact that their sound has gone out. What sound, Paul? And their words. He's talking about the stars. Psalms 19 17 is actually talking about the stars. And the, and the stars speaking. In the heavens. Y'all with that? Y'all see it? 1970. You got it? Ain't no 17? Well, one of them, I don't know. 1916, what is it? you find it. We'll find it. I might have wrote the wrong verse, huh? It could be 19, 1 and 2. 1 and 2? Is it 1 and 2? Yeah, it was, yeah, the, the heavens declare there's one. Yeah, the day speak day and night. That's one. That's the one. Nineteen one and two. I knew y'all find that was a quiz. <laughs> Open book quiz too. That's my that's my fast typing and not and not being able to type type right sometimes. So yeah, see what read read nineteen one and two. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmness show his hand where come on. Day unto day they speak. And see and show his knowledge. And so now that's why they try to make sure they try to say, well, because you know Virgo is over here and Virgo done and they're speaking. Yeah, they ain't speaking. That's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about that. He's talking about the heavens declaring the glory that God is putting things in places like, for instance, Jupiter over uh, um, um, Regius, Regius. And now because it is circling it, it looked like Jupiter, the king planet, is over the king star. Well, you, gotta get, you get king. That's not a constellation. That's stars. How do the, how do the stars that move Operate in the fixed stars. They're fixed stars and they're moving stars. Y'all don't understand that, right? You got that? And we are part of a moving star, aren't we? You see? You're on a planet, but it's a star. If you're somewhere else, it look like a star. It don't look like a planet. It look like a star. And the star is, and this planet as a star is moving throughout the fixed stars. Y'all, y'all with me? And how are they interacting with each other? And are they speaking? Are they, are they telling you things that's going on? You see? It's, and they are. They are. But you're doing it not from a position of trying to say, oh, this is causism. No, we're doing it from a position of saying, oh, this is a sign. Maybe this is a sign or is it, is it a sign? You see, what, you, you follow what's happening? Okay. Um, even even to the to the degree of dealing with what we've dealt with um, several years ago, and 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 the truth of the matter, we got from those from from that we got all the mess that followed. What followed was exactly what tends to happen when you have it, and that's a blood moon. Yes. And we had three of them, and out, and what followed the blood moon, you got a pandemic. You had more than that. You had crazy. You, we don't even think about what followed the blood moon, because basically, what well, we were looking for something next day. Right. That's not. It's not next day. <laughs> Great, sir. Are y'all with me? But the blood moon always have destruction behind it. We had three within within two years, yeah. and nobody got ready. We said, "Oh, isn't that pretty?" 
<laughs> okay. I'm talking. It. That was a sign. The moon was a sign. Are y'all here with me? Okay, good, 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 good. So, get that right. So the Magi is following that sign. Paul's preaching like a rascal, and he's connecting. He says in verse 19, he says, But I say, did not Israel know? He said, he said first, Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. That's Deuteronomy 22 and 31, I believe, based on my tab, and I believe it is. He's using all scripture to make his point here. This is all this, he says in verse 20, he says, Elias is very bold and says, I found of them that sought me not. I was found of them that sought me not. I was made, I was made manifest unto them that asked not for me. Isaiah 55, 4 through 5. Isaiah said it even, even bolder. And then he says, and then in Deuteronomy 31 and 27, he says, Paul says, but to Israel, he says, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. He says, Paul says, you knew based on the scripture that God was going to establish a new covenant. You also knew that God was going to send into the earth his king and you saw it because the heavens declared it and you all saw it. You were not, you were not fooled. So if you think about this for a moment and I end right here, if you think about this for a moment, if the religion, if, if the Magi comes all the way from Babylonian from Iraq to Jerusalem on their camels with their, with their stuff to bring into this king then those that were in Jerusalem who were Jews they knew it too so why is this a mis surprise to you that one that is called Christ or, G or Messiah has come you should be celebrating, but you're not. So you now understand why Jesus gave them the parable. It was related to them knowing that you killed all of the people that were sent to you. Now remember, you gave the parable that if the man lends out his field right. and he sends to get from those people that the field was lended out to, what belonged to him and they say we're not giving it to you they beat some they killed others and then he said that the man says well they didn't hear them but they will hear my son mm -hmm. and he sends his son and you do with him whatever you want to do as well that's what Jesus is saying you know who I am my God. Because it was in the heavens declaring who I am. It won't no surprise. God showed you and you should have been looking for it. And I know your leaders knew it as well because the Magi came all the way to see me and bring me all of them, the, the frankincense and myrrh and all of that kind of stuff. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> You know who you know who I am. You just don't want to release the field, right? Because you think it belonged to you, right? And that's why he just the last one. He says, I, "I've stretched my hand out to you all these all this time. I stretched my hand out to you. That's why it, the Elias said. That's why Moses said it. I stretched my hand out to you, and you just turned away from me." So I'm going to use a nation to provoke you. And he's talking about us that he would use to provoke them to jealousy so that they would want the God that they claim to have that they did not accept yet they knew who he was. Father, we bless and sanctify this time in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand even greater your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Love, we love you. God bless you.
Have a great one. Hey, listen, we want to be, be back here Sunday. I got a treat for you on Sunday. Awesome man of God coming in town. I really I caught him. We got him from South Africa. You're not going to want to miss him. Glory to God. And I'm um, doing great work in South Africa, but you're going to love him. So that's why I did this tonight so that you could have opportunity to hear him on Sunday. So God bless you. Have a great one. I see you on Sunday in Jesus name. Bye bye. Amen. Y'all learn something? Yeah. A little something?